I didn't um, write anything. I haven't got anything planned, so I'll just tell you my story. So hopefully that inspires you a little bit. I only found out yesterday I was doing it. So yeah. But anyway, um, like I don't know much about your attitudes, but I used to be in this block as well. So like I can kind of tell that you have like might have a little bit of a problem with authority sometimes. But when I was younger, we'll skip to it. When I was younger, my mom had me when she was like real young, so we used to move a lot like different school and it was always like council estate so when you grow up in a council estate it's mainly a little bit more rough and you see things that you don't want to see so it gives you a certain attitude and um yeah we would move from here there like everywhere and she had like she used to always pick the worst men so like my role models were like idiots to be honest so i was growing up with all this and by the time i got to the warren i was like 13 and i had moved from like maybe 13 different schools by the time I got here, like my mum was single by the time I got here, and I remember it just made me so angry out of everything that I've seen. So like my attitude in this school was like no one could tell me nothing. I had a real bad problem with authority, like I'm saying, no teacher could tell me nothing. I was naughty, I will admit that, like, like I'm saying, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was, I was pretty naughty. And um, I remember when teachers would tell me like, with this attitude, you're gonna get nowhere in life, with that attitude, bring it into the out, like to, to the real world, like you won't get nowhere. And like I'm saying at the time, I didn't care. Like anyone could tell me I wasn't gonna do this, I wasn't gonna do that. It didn't mean nothing to me, because in my head, I thought I was gonna do something. Yeah, so, it, so I didn't really listen to them. Didn't do well in school, because um, I had certain friends, and I was like a bit of a chat the lad myself. So there was times where I would go into a lower class just to be with my friends. Yeah, then when you actually leave school, and it's like, where are them friends now? But like, you haven't got the education that you want because you sacrifice certain things for your friends, yeah? And I remember, like my attitude got so bad at one point that I had to leave my mum's house and I moved to um, the Bambi foyer. You know what the foyer is? Yeah, I moved to the Bambi foyer. And I, got, um, I had to leave school as well. I had to leave school at 15. I didn't make it last year. Because like I'm saying, because of my attitude, went to the Bambi foyer. Met the wrong crowd, even worse crowd. My attitude just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I was doing certain things like going out, getting drunk every night, getting into fights, doing stupid, like stupid things, yeah. And um, I remember, I remember one night I got really drunk, and we went to this house party, and we come back, and I was like drunk, really, really, really drunk. And I wanted to go to that house party with these friends, my friends, and. Um, I've tripped and I fell and like I smacked the back of my head and like I woke up the next day and I was in the foyer and I didn't know how I got there, yeah, because they just left me, my so-called friends just left me. And I remember waking up in the foyer, and I was like almost 18 at the time, waking up in the foyer, massive lump in my head, feeling like, feeling real bad, I swear, yeah. feeling real bad. And um, I just remember thinking like, like, I was trying to explain this without swearing because it makes me angry sometimes, yeah, but I was trying to think like, how am I here right now, you know what I mean? Because when I was younger, and like I was saying, I used to move from school to school to school to school, and when it comes to sports days and stuff, like, I, I was the man when it comes to sports days, that was what I was confident at, I thought I was going to be, like, the next big thing when it comes to sport, and I messed all that up when I was like 13, so I got in, I got in with the wrong crowd, but anyway, when I was in the foyer, I was looking around at my friends, Realised I didn't really have any. And I looked around at what I had, and I had like a bed, a chair, and a sink, and a mirror. That's all I had. This like this little room. It's about the size of a bedroom, and that's where I was living. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, is this like, is this me? Is this where I wanted to be when I was younger? Is this like where this kid who had all these dreams of being a big sports star wanted to end up? And I just remember I sat there for hours just thinking, if I carry on living like this, and if I carry on living in this small little like room every teacher that told me i wasn't going to make anything of myself was going to be right for one people who doubted me are going to be right people who said i'd end up with nothing and as nothing would be right because i had no job i had nothing i was just thinking like if i'm i'm proving everyone right right now you know what i mean i'm proving them right by being here and i just remember it making me like so angry so like that's when i quit smoking quit drinking just decided to change my life around from that moment and 
I wanted to go back to what I was good at, and that was sport, and that's when I come up to the gym. And the only reason why I went up to a boxing gym is because I had no money at the time. I couldn't afford like a membership. I had to pay as you go. That's how I met there. And started doing that, started staying out of trouble, and it was just cool to have a focus on something and try to turn my life around. And went back to college, made up for the things that I'd missed here in the Warringah. And a year later, that's when I become a British champion, and the boys that I used to chill with, they all got locked up. They got locked up for five years. I don't know if I would have been locked up with them. I would never know that, but I remember it used to always be up, so it could have went both ways. And yeah, I started training, started training hard. And I'm like, even though this talk might be about boxing, it's because this is my story, but it doesn't have to be about boxing. It's about like the work ethic and not listening to anyone and not letting anyone tell you you can't do nothing. I remember going up to that gym and training for hours and hours and hours and hours every day. And like he said, I used to get beat up because I was, um, I was sparring people and fighting people who had been like, fighting years. for like yeah. a year, two years. But like, when you want something so much and you focus on it, like I was always confident that I could get it if I work hard at it. Do you know what I mean? If you want to do whatever you want to do, if you work hard at it, then you will get it. One thing I can't stand in certain people is when they say, I want to be this, or I want to be that, and blah, 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 and they talk a good one, but they just sit at home and doing nothing. Then when you ask them why they're not doing it, like they blame it on their past. You know what I mean? Like, um, I used to do it a lot. I was guilty of it before. And I've traveled, like I've traveled all around the world, and I've met different people. And from doing that, I realized like, I'm not the only one who's had a bad background. Like, my background is nothing compared to some people. And I just hate people when, like, you could come from nothing, or you could come from everything. It doesn't matter where you come from, like, everyone deserves a chance. You can't just blame certain things. I hate people as like, I want this, but I can't get it because I was brought up this way, or I've done this, or this, this was my role model. Like, only you can change it. You can either go that way, or you can do something about it. If you're, if you're surrounded by drugs and drink and violence and, like, all the wrong stuff, you could sit there and be like, uh, this is where I'm supposed to be right now because I'm surrounded by it. Or you could look at it and be like, I don't want to be nothing like that and I want to change it. Yeah, I hate people who blame everything on their past. Like I was saying, I used to do it, I was guilty of it, but like anyone can change it. So either way, I started training. I become, a year later, I become a British champion. Two years later, two, British, uh, two years champion. Three, three years I won it. Three years British champion in a row. Then I fought for England, fought for... Great Britain. Then my trainer passed away, and that's when, and that's when I started overtraining. That's when everything went a little bit like downhill. Then a photographer come up to the gym and asked, "Did I want to do some modeling?" And that. So I said, "At first, I was like, no, nah, I don't want to be a model. Like, get away with that. I don't want to be a model. I put it off for like eight months because I had that stereotype of a model. Everyone looked, you know, like that. Hey, like, what's going on? I'm a model. I didn't want that, but." They offered me to go to Paris. Now. <laughs> they offered me to go to Paris. So I went to Paris. And I'd done like a runway. I walked from here to that building and back and got like stupid amounts of money for it. And I got to travel at the same time. And I just thought like I might stick with this for a little bit, right this way, see where it goes to, you know, if it's that easy. Then from there I went to New York. Went to New York, um, Met with Calvin Klein and all them, like, I got a two-year contract with them. Then I got like billboards and everything all over the world. Got to travel over the world, got to meet new people, got a TV show. Like I've got a TV show out in America. I'm so not yeah, saying now. this, it's on TV, TV it's yeah. in the UK right now. And um, I'm not saying all this to be like, oh, look at me and rub it in your face. I'm saying like, from where I come from, like you would never expect me to have that. All that was is from like, belief and hard work for myself, no matter what anyone says. My family doubted me at some times, like friends doubted me, teachers doubted me, and it's just like, what I'm trying to say to you, anything that you want, if you work hard at it, you can get it. And education is like so important. When I left, I wish that I stuck to, like I wish that I, I got my grades and got everything up. Because when you are put in that real world, like if you ain't got money, you literally can't do nothing. And if you feel like you're Jack the Lad now and I'm the man in school, how are you going to be the man in the outside world if you ain't got a job, you ain't got no money, you ain't got a car, you ain't got nothing? Do you know what I mean? And it's just like, you need to really, really focus. If you're in year 10 right now, you've got like a year left. Are you in year 10? Mm -hmm. A year left. Then it's out there. Do you know what I mean? You have to like, 
it's no more school. Like you need to get a job. You need to get everything. You need to be educated. And one thing about women as well that I will say now that I've travelled and stuff, like in school it's all good with, with girls and stuff, but when you get older, like there's nothing sexier to a woman than like brains. See if you're like, see if you didn't feel when you're stupid, you're not getting no girls no matter how good <laughs> you might be. So you need to be educated for one. And like I'm saying, if you want to enjoy the good things in life, then you need a decent job so you can, so you can have them good things. Having, I had rubbish jobs, I had really bad jobs on building sites, everything, so jobs that I didn't like. And yeah, so basically, like where I come from, I'm just an example of anyone could do it. It doesn't matter where your past is, like you could have a really bad past or a good past. As long as you put the work in, you'll get there. And someone told me like advice once. They said like the best bit of advice I've ever had. They told me like never worry about your past and don't worry about your future. Just take care of every single thing you can right now in the present and your future will sort itself out and your past will make a lot more sense. And if you live by that and you do that, I swear to God, like you can do anything you want. If you like I'm saying, whatever you just want to do from now until you leave school, or whatever you want to be when you leave school, if you put the work in right now, you're guaranteed to get it when you leave. Like I mean it, like I'm saying, I'm a perfect example of that. Three years ago, I had nothing. And now, like, I have a TV show in America. I live in America. I have billboards all over the world. I'm known all over the world. Do you know what I mean? That was coming from nothing. So, like, I'm a perfect example of anyone can do it. It don't matter where you are. Thank you so much. No worries.